What's up guys, Zach from Wired Customs, and today I'm going to show you an easy electrical upgrade for your classic ride, and how to run a tachometer off your alternator. Okay, so what we have here is two different alternators. These are from two different points in time. Now this is a new alternator, let's say it's probably like a year old, it runs great, but the technology is from the 60s. Now this alternator does nothing but charge, it doesn't know what the charge is, it doesn't know when to turn on, it doesn't know when to turn off, it needs a whole control circuit just for the alternator. That's a bunch of extra wires, that's a bunch of extra mess underneath the hood, that's a bunch of extra complication. Now uh, you can see on the back of this alternator all the different connections you need to make uh, and need to make correctly in order for this alternator to work. These all go into the control circuit of the voltage regulator here. Really old school setup. And if you really want that clean look inside your classic car, you don't want extra wires, that's for sure. Um, I like to hide as many wires as I possibly can when I'm wiring up a car, such as this 66 Mustang behind me. So what I'm going to do is bring the charging system of this 66 Mustang up into this century. Now, what we have here is this beautiful alternator off of a brand new Camaro. This is what we're switching to. We're getting rid of this old technology, we're putting new technology in it. This is a self-exciting alternator, otherwise known as the GM One Wire Alternator. It does everything internally. It doesn't need all this extra junk right here. It just needs this one wire from the battery to the back of the alternator keeping your engine compartment much cleaner. And I just like the idea of having an alternator out of a new car and my classic ride. It gives you a little bit of peace of mind. So I'm gonna put the part number on the screen and in the description of the video, and I'm gonna read it out loud for you right now. I got this at CarQuest, so you can probably get this at any local parts store near you. So the part number that I have right here in my hand is 71271-WHISKEY-ALPHA. So I'm not here to sell you anything, I'm not sponsored by anybody, I'm just here to give you the information. So I'm going to let you know the one and only downfall that I know of, of the self-exciting alternators. So the one downfall is that the stator on the inside holds a charge. Now I'm not going to go into every little detail for you, um, I don't know every little detail myself, but what we need to know is that stator holds a charge, when this spins, it sees that, it tells the alternator to turn on and to start charging the battery. If that stator doesn't have a charge anymore, i.e. your car has been sitting for a year or two or the new part has been sitting on the shelf for a year or two that stator is going to slowly lose its charge and it's not going to know when to excite to charge your battery but that's not a big issue um, if you're trying to resurrect a vehicle like in my resurrection series or if you get an alternator it doesn't work I mean take it back if it's brand new but if you had it on your shelf for a while uh, you're going to be a little frustrated so if you run into that situation this is how you re-excite that wire so exciting that stator is pretty simple. We're gonna need two things to happen. You're gonna need this jumper wire, and you're gonna need this actually bolted up to the car, ready to run. You're going to hook up your lead with the alternator on and running from the power post, and jump it to the R, or sometimes labeled as one post right here. It just needs to be for a couple seconds, you pull it off. It should give that a little charge on the inside. And since it's spinning, it'll tell it to start charging. Now, if you do this and it doesn't excite and start charging itself, uh, you might have a bad alternator. So get that looked into, take it back to the parts store. Okay, so on some older vehicles, like a flathead V12 or some of the older flatheads, you can't just hook up a signal wire for the tachometer to the coil. Um, it's not built that way, it's not an option. So you need to find a different way to get a tachometer signal other than just the coil. Now, your alternator is probably the cheapest option. There's a bunch of different options, gets really, really expensive, but an alternator is 60 bucks and you got a tachometer ready to go. How can you beat 60 bucks? There's no way you're gonna beat a tachometer for that cheap on one of these older vehicles. Now, obviously, I recommend switching everything over to 12 volt, which is a long video all in itself, protecting the gauges, any original electrical inside the vehicle. Make sure you look into that before you just throw a 12 volt alternator on it and go to town. But I'm gonna explain this option for you. Now, this specific alternator right here, you could use it for a tachometer, but you have to take it apart and get the signal off the stator. 
That's a bunch of extra work. This is by the right alternator. I don't have one here to show you personally, so I'll throw up some pictures of what it looks like in the video. And I'll also throw up the part numbers so you can see them, so you can order them. But this is how it's going to work. These other alternators are on a lot of vehicles, Cadillacs, Isuzu's, a bunch of different GM applications. So they're still easy to find. It's going to have a four-way plug right here on the side of the alternator. You're going to get similar RF, but P is the one you're looking for, pulse. This is the pulse signal coming from the stator inside the alternator. So that's going to give you a pulse for your tachometer. All you have to do is jumper that lead from the tachometer to the P on the side of that alternator. Very simple, very affordable, and very practical on like a flathead V12 where you have no options to get a tachometer other than mechanically. So that is a super simple upgrade to get a tachometer off the alternator. Just buy the right alternator, get the belt set up, run it, plug it, you're good to go. So we got a lot more coming up on my Get Wired series. We got fuel injection, my favorite fuel injection, Holly Sniper, easy. We got a wiring harness from American Auto Wire that I'm going to be installing into this Mustang. It looks like it's complicated, it looks overbearing, but once I break it down for you, it's going to be simple. So make sure you like this video, comment your questions, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, and as always, thank you for watching.